JGT, what's up, brother? What up, bro? How you been? I'm good. I mean, I'm I'm, a, I'm still feeling a little bit of a gut punch. You know what I mean? But starting to get my breath back some after watching that game. Yeah. But uh, was was proud of the kids today, Jay. They played hard. They came out. They competed. It's one of those kind of games, and nobody ever wants to hear this, but you learn something about yourself in a loss, and you saw those kids play extremely hard. They played for their coach. They played for their, They played for themselves as a team. And so just a lot to be proud of there today from that standpoint. Obviously, some still some room to develop, but uh, love what you saw from just a pure overall effort and tenacity standpoint. Yeah, for sure. So I thought they were going to really fight hard this game, Jay. I thought this was going to be a close game. And so I feel kind of vindicated by that. What were your thoughts going into this game? I honestly felt the same way. Uh, I haven't posted that this week <clears throat> just because, I, I don't know, I think you probably always, when it's Georgia week, you you don't really know how the team's going to respond. It hasn't been great the last couple of years for sure. But you could tell this team thought they left points on the field against a and They came out and they laid it all on the line. Um, and you should feel vindicated, Jay, because you were up front and said that, and, and they absolutely fell through and, and played hard. Um, about as hard as I think they're capable of doing. Could we have done some things differently down the stretch? Sure. But at the end of the day, George is a more talented team than us. The, the team that – it's going to pay me to say this, man. The team that probably deserves to win one. It just – God, it sucks saying that. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> But proud of proud of the kids. I, I really am. And, of course, more than anything, it, that was a great showing for recruiting. You had a ton of kids in the stands today that you needed uh, to see an Auburn, an Auburn atmosphere the way that it was presented today, and you got that. And so from that, and from that standpoint, it was absolutely a slam dunk win. Would have yeah. been better with, with, a, with a W, but from a talent acquisition standpoint, today was an A+. plus. For sure. Uh, offense, trash at A&M competent today kind of interesting um are you more bullish on what they can do going forward so yes in that they're starting to piece together they definitely leaned into the run game today they showed a lot more than that what they have shown it was a lot of the baylor run game if we're being completely honest today a lot of gap scheme stuff that was mixed in there a lot of zone uh it's some good RPO action there, some good decision-making by the quarterbacks. Now, are we ever going to be an offense that's lightening up for 35, 40 a night? I don't think we've got the personnel to do that. But I think they're starting to determine who their playmakers are. Rivaldo Fairweather took another step forward again today. Jarquez looked better, even though he's still slowed by injury. Brian Batiste really popped on tape today. You can see that he's got that extra gear, and the kid just runs tough, Jay. I mean, he really does. He does. Um, and, you know, with one hand kind of tied behind their back with some of the limitations we have at receiver, I mean, I think the kids really played about as hard as they possibly can. I mean, I think you've got about the maximum of what you're going to get for the most part. Now, can we continue to iron some things out because you're going to play defenses that aren't as good as Georgia? Yeah, and I think we're going to put in more points. And that streak's probably going to start about the time you play LSU. Mm. Got some big choices you're to make. To, yeah, you're seeing it tonight that they're not great. Got some big choices to make during this off this off week, uh, Jay Head. Definitely big choices to make. Um, as far as personnel, how you want to kind of scheme things, and, and this is a good self scout week. You're coming off a good performance. Um, you probably learned some more things about yourself. They're definitely within the run game. The passing game is where you still just needed to come along, but but let's give credit where credit is due. Georgia's got an elite secondary. They've got a very good defensive front, and you just put up over 200 yards rushing on a team that hasn't given up for 200 yards rushing, I think, over five years. Damn. So realize that schematically you did some things to scheme some guys and to put yourself in a position to win when you were down and when you weren't. Vegas had you with the line at 14, 15, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you were well underneath that. And that's good. Uh, it's absolutely good. It's, listen, this is where you want to be. 
okay? It, I mean, you would have preferred W, right? Like, I don't think there's anybody that's listening to the drain tonight that's going to say, you know, I'm satisfied with a loss. But when you're coming out of a situation like this, you're looking for positives, and you saw major growth in this game. Major. You saw development in this game. You major. saw development in this game. You saw guys take a step forward and continue to play hard. And you worry about that when you have as much turnover on the roster as we had this past year. You don't know how guys are going to respond to adversity. And they definitely hit adversity coming out of A&M. And you saw a positive from a team that's just not going to give in. They're going to continue to fight. Yeah. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway from tonight. Recruiting-wise, who are the biggest names here today that, that you think this could have affected? So, recruiting-wise today, obviously, you've got some major stars in the house from K.J. Bolden is there. Uh, I don't know. You know, if the situation with Florida State, that's going to be a really tough flip. But I think he's going to be impressed by the atmosphere. I think he's going to be impressed by what he's seen today. Um, you've got some other guys there. Favorite Edwin, a big offensive tackle uh, out, of, uh, out of Georgia. I'm trying to think of the, the name of the school. Uh, there in the Atlanta area, but he would be a really big time recruit for us to pick up, not because of the number of stars by his name, but because you only have one offensive lineman committed in this class right now, and you need to have at least four or five every year. He's a kid that's extremely raw, but he's got all the clay and the talent to play, you know, at a four star, five star level. He's that kind of project if he hits, and we both know that offensive line is a developmental position. So sometimes you don't get really, you know what I mean? You just don't look at the stars as much for that position. You look yeah. more at the frame, the length, everything else. Mm-hmm. Those are two off the top of my head. And then you've got a big junior college safety that's there today. He's not on an official visit. I think he switched it to an unofficial. I'm reaching for the kid's name right now, uh, originally from Greenville, Alabama. He's at Holmes Community College right now. But he is an absolute hitter and a striker. And if you're going to lose Zion after this year, and obviously you're probably going to lose your other safety to the NFL draft because I don't think that Jalen Simpson can play much better. You could really use a guy to come into that back end that can play right away and get into your 2D. Um, and he's that kind of a kid. I think he's the number one junior college safety in the country today. So those are the three that really stand out to me that you probably could have made an impression on. And yeah. then there's a lot of 2025 kids, Jay. Yeah, A tons. lot of 2025 kids there that you're not behind anybody with, right? You know what I mean? Like you're you're on the same foot as Kirby or Nick or anybody else that you're recruiting against when you're going for those kids. And so you're showing them a lot today by being willing to go out there and fight and what kind of atmosphere Auburn can be and yeah. what you could be on the a, a part of in rebuilding this once proud program. Hey, man, I mean, Hugh is – and you're someone who keeps a really close eye on this every day. Hugh is going in the right direction right now. Would you, would you agree with that? Absolutely he is. But the, everybody wants to just win every game, right? Like there is this – I can feel it in the fan base. They just want – they want a W every time they line up. They, they, they don't want to – there's this thing right now out there with rebuilding where people's patience just isn't there. They see what USC did last year and then they, they automatically want that. They want to go from ground floor of winning five games and six games, two straight seasons. And even in Malzahn's last year, I think we won six games, six games, a solid, had, right? Solid, right? Not really, but, yeah. and then recruiting classes that were towards, you know, the twenties, so the talent's not where it needs to be, but success is never a straight line. There's zigs and zags, and there's times when you're going to flatline and other times when you're going to boom up. But today was an absolute, from an eye test standpoint, this definitely tells you you're going in the right direction. I mean, you went toe-to-toe with a top ten. I don't think Georgia's the number one team in the country. I honestly don't, but I think they're in the top ten, that's for sure. And you went toe-to-toe in your house with a team that wanted to absolutely physically impose themselves on you and you didn't bend and you didn't buckle. You know what I mean? You stood up to the challenge. So, yes, he's going in the right direction. We're three and two right now. You're going into the bye week. You're going to self-scout. You're going to do the things that you need to do to iron out your offensive plan, and then you're just going to kind of start to lay it all out the rest of the year. Um, And to me, the turn point game has always going to be the Ole Miss game. When Lane comes to town, that's your that's your shot to really get one, in my opinion, that 
Vegas is going to predict to go the other way. I like that matchup against their defense. I think that's going to be a game that we match up really well. Mississippi State's a game we can win. Um, Arkansas on the road will be tough, but that's not a game that you should be scared about. And then obviously Vanderbilt. So this season can still be very positive. I still feel yeah. very much that six and six, seven and five is absolutely on the table. And if anybody says that that's not upward trajectory, I, I just I don't think they truly know what football is or what a rebuilding process is like. Yeah. I mean, I I know people are going to probably debate that. That's fine. That that's my hot take for tonight. You don't know what you're looking at if you don't think six and six or seven yeah. and five is an upgrade from where we were last year. They, well, people will say, well, their record wasn't that bad last year. I'm like, it was bad, and it was getting worse because they lost a lot of good players. Like, this roster was fucked. It, big time, right? Like, And here's the thing. We still don't have the top-end talent defensively that we had last year, or maybe even offensively. Who do we have that compares to Tank on offense? Nobody. Who do we have on defense that's Kobe Wooden or Derek Hall? Nobody. See what I mean? And yet – this same team last year went into Athens and got their ass beat by, what was it, 30-plus plus, 30 plus points? Yeah. And then you turn back around the next year and play them within seven in your house. They're getting better. They're getting better. That's how I feel about it. That's how you should feel about it, and I hope Damn everybody right. else does too. Look, I know people are going to be salty after a loss, right? I get it. I understand it. I know they wanted this one. But you have to look at it for what it is. And success isn't going to come overnight. Look, Dye said it best, okay? There's going to be days like this when you're going to lay it on the line. And all you can do is lay it on the line again and again and again until you get to the point where you want to be. And that's how the fan base should look at it. And I know that's how Freeze and his coaching staff looks at it. And I'm sure that's how this team is taking it right now. They don't accept the loss but they're going to build off of it, Word. and that's all you can do. Jay had an amazing call as usual for you. Thanks for giving us some time, bro. No, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. I hope everybody in the drain has a great time tonight. Look forward to talking to you again next week, buddy. All right, brother. See you, man. Thank you, JG. Bye.